Uh, hey guys, I just saw a video recently on Steve Losh, Losh's YouTube page where he did a kind of an overview of his MRC, and I thought that was interesting, and so I thought I'd do my own video of my own MRC. So here it is. This is my MRC. It's kind of similar to structure and uh, to his. I use a fold method marker and folds to kind of categorize things. Um, mine's significantly smaller than his, but still pretty long, I think, in comparison to most people's VimRCs, are much shorter, but mine's, uh, 428 lines. Um, so yeah, we'll get started. This, start, to start up, usual stuff, set my color scheme, turn file type plugin on, syntax on, set no compatible, of course. Um, this is probably the only thing of note here, I, I have an extra pathogen directory, called source, and this is where I keep plugins that I'm actively developing or that I've changed the source of or something, just so that I don't get them confused with other things. I use submodules for my other uh, bundled plugins, so I don't want to get those confused. Um, for options, a lot of standard stuff here. Um, I set cursor line, as you can see, UTF-8 encoding. I do use expand tab. I use no highlight search. I don't really like having to always type the NOH, and I don't find the highlighting all that useful, honestly. Um, yeah, nothing too too spectacular here. I do set mouse to A, even though I rarely ever use this. It's interesting. You can click uh, to change tabs and stuff, and you can you know visually select with the mouse. I was doing this one day, and I realized that there's an X over here in this top right corner and you can actually click on that to close a window I don't know who's doing that but I thought it was interesting um, I set list and list cares list cars, chairs, cars, whatever you want to call them uh, as you can see this character is my end of line character that's my tab character as a lot of people use I think it's quite nice so if I do tabs it looks like this it's kind of fun um, no backup right now. I actually do use swap files still. Sorry, Steve Lodge. I guess I'm not cool enough for 2012 yet. Um, yeah, the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I take menus and stuff off of my GUI, and I do set full screen. Uh, I have a little map to set full screen in GUI mode. Um, if I'm in terminal, I set Control C to yank to my system clipboard. Um, and I use Control T to open up new tabs, just because it's quick. Sometimes I like a fresh screen that's empty. I'm just weird like that. I really don't use Mac Vim or GUI very much. Uh, I only really use it ever for Quick Cursor. I don't know if y'all use Quick Cursor, but like, say I'm on Stack Overflow, which I sometimes am on, and I want to edit this person's post. What Quick Cursor does is I can like hit Shift Command E, and it'll open up a Mac Vim window. I can full screen that, edit their post or whatever, and then save it, and it'll put it right back into the text area where I edit it. So that's really cool. I use that a whole lot, and I like it. But other than that, I really am rarely ever in uh, GUI Vim because I I like Tmux so much. I like being able to split panes and you know, do stuff over here, put my to-do list and whatnot. Um, and I manage my music in Tmux with VimPC. I have another video on that. Here are my leaders. Um, a little, I'm a little bit weird as far as leaders go because I don't remap to comma. I still use backslash and so I have this map right here for if I ever need to type a backslash I'd have to hit it twice. So it's really not that bad. It's Rare, it's rare that I actually type a backslash unless I'm using uh, LaTeX or something like that, which I'm not huge on. Plus toggle toggles the tag list plugin. Um, I do like leader Q. I use leader Q, leader W, and leader Z a lot. So this is like quit, save, and save and quit, basically. And it's based off of the capital Z, capital Q, which quits, or the capital Z, capital Z, which saves and quits. So 
I use that same kind of philosophy, but I just do leader Z because it's faster and leader Q to quit. And then I also added leader, leader W to save. Um, sign on place. This is for when like I'm compiling code. It'll put little signs on the side and this just removes them. To real delete, or to delete to the black hole buffer, or register, my bad, I'll uh, use leader D. And then I map all this stuff in insert mode and in normal mode. Um, this should really not be here. Should go down into my functions. So I'll put that down here. Okay. And the rest of that's not very exciting. So, oh, leader E. I do use leader E. That just uh, opens up the uh, the directory of the current file. So if I wanted to go to netrw, that's how I do it. Okay. I use a lot of pandoc and I do a lot of markdown notes. So I have a whole block here where I make various commands to do stuff. Um, I use this nls a lot. Note would make like a new note. I keep them in a notes folder where I, I take all my notes and I can generate PDFs with them. I, I generate like a note PDF where I keep all my you know generate the markdown into a PDF and this is how I study my notes. Um, then the NLS, the NLS is like note ls and or I don't know why I named it that but I've, it's just been like that. And then ACK. Uh, so I can I can use this uh, leader open bracket open square bracket here and then I can type in a search term like hematuria or something and it will search through my notes and put it in a quick list and I can look through you know the various areas. Oh here are those signs I was talking about so I can do like leader X to remove the signs if I want to. Okay um, so I do a lot of that stuff. Uh, fuzzy finder this is crucial. Um, I use fuzzy finder for everything as you've seen I've popped into this a couple times already to look at my notes. Um, oops. And I use uh, Fuzzy Finder religiously. So I have pretty much maps for all the common directories I go to, like my home folder, uh, my Vim folder, my web folder, my notes folder, my everything folder. So and my blog posts, everything is mapped like that. Uh, this might be the only section you actually get anything out of for this, so sorry for bearing with me for the rest of it. Um, but these are kind of like the little handy tidbits that you might like. Uh, f this, these two things are nice. Um, I don't know if you know, but the uh, CGU, it's, it makes a breakpoint in your undo history. And usually when you use the, C, the CU command in insert mode, it would not remember what you typed like it doesn't go into your into your undo history at all but with these commands when I hit control U if I go into normal mode and hit U it'll bring it back so both of these are really nice same for control W deletes the last word so last word and then I can undo so those are nice um, this is something I created because I a lot of times when I'm typing prose I'll type a sentence and I'll be like, oh, I didn't like that sentence, so this is just a quick little map to delete the last sentence. Um, oops. Don't want to do that, though. Um, I map CN and CP in normal mode to CNext and CPreVious, so that when I'm using a quick fix like I was a minute ago, I can just hit you know whether I'm, even if I'm in this top window I can hit control N or control P so that's handy it's not saved I could do it now though you know if I wanted to I could do that or whatever um, let's see Z space I have about to open and close my folds that's what I've been doing here uh, this is really just me being lazy because a lot of times when I visually select something and then I want to go up, I don't take my hand off of the shift key fast enough. And usually uh, K 
does this like looking up the man page for whatever the the current word is and I rarely ever use that and so I was really tired of getting thrown into the shell for trying to select lines upwards so I just did this um, last paragraph I use this a whole lot because like I said I use markdown a lot and a lot of times I would just want to go to the very last little block like this so what the ZP does is it jumps to the last line it goes to the last it goes up one pair one you know to the last empty line um, and then it goes down so that I get the title line does a ZT which puts it at the top of the screen like that and then goes to the end of the file and I put it in a norm like it says here because sometimes I'll do it in insert mode with control O and I don't want it to break so basically just does this it puts me on the very last paragraph um, this is something I actually made today increment ordered list I use ordered lists a lot too because I take notes in markdown a lot um, and you know for example if I'm typing an ordered list like this a lot of times I want to go to number two and I'm tired of hitting enter and typing in two so let this left uh, this leader enter just increments the list which I think is a lifesaver so and as you can see what it's doing is it's just yanking the line and then pasting it and I can actually change this to Y um, increments the number up one and then deletes the rest of the line adds space uh, you all know what this is this is for when you forget to sudo into a file um, this is something because I've been using the W the backslash W a lot to save files I'm trying to train myself to not use colon W because it's a lot slower for me and so this is a little training thing I been using to if I do accidentally press it then uh, then uh, Vim will close and tell me I'm a moron so yeah I might be a little bit masochistic I don't know uh, these are stuff this is stuff that I gained from Steve Losh's VimRC that I think is really nice tab for percent I hate typing percent so this is awesome and then for uh, first non-blank character and last non-blank character sometimes I actually do when I go to the first non-blank I use zero a lot and generally I just use zero and then W so I, to get to the first non-blank but I like this a lot better H and L it's nice um, let's see okay auto commands I have a bunch of auto commands this is from my markdown stuff. Like I said, I have a bunch of that. It probably doesn't interest you. This is really cool. This is for non uh, any any file that's non vim will open up externally, or will get converted into a PDF. So like, if I try to open a dot doc, I don't even know if I have one right now to demonstrate. That's that's a good thing that there's no dot docs on my system. <laughs> oh, here's one right here. So if I try to open a dot .doc, then it'll convert it to a PDF. Oh, what's it saying? Overwrite. Yeah, sure. It'll convert it to a PDF and uh, display it for me. Yeah, the only reason it did that little prompt there is because I already had a PDF in that. I already had a PDF version of that file in there. Um, yeah, so that's really helpful. I use that a ton, and I can open pictures and GIFs and everything straight from Vim. So this is usually how I navigate files anyway, so it helps a lot. Um, some random files type type stuff. Uh, this just keeps Powerline from breaking. For some reason, it was breaking if I didn't add that. And this renews every time I uh, save. It uh, renews the Fuzzy Finder cache. So, if I create a new file and then save it, my fuzzy finder cache will be updated. So, it'll get the new file. Uh, these are pretty cool. These are my split screen commands. Um, so, I use this. You can look into these commands right here, but they basically allow me to 
if I want to go to the you know make a split to the right, I use the H H J K uh, K L stuff. So if I do C Control L, it'll open it on the right. But if I did C Control H, oops, C Control H, it'll do it on the left. You know, and same for top and bottom. And uh, D would delete it, and G maximizes it, and I use the just the regular controls to go in between them. So I like that a lot. It makes things fast. Um, plugins, we don't go into those. Functions, those are just functions for the stuff I've already showed you mostly. Nothing too interesting in here. This is a Oh, uh, this is kind of interesting, I guess. This is like, I made a blog post on this, but it's how I paste. It's my paste bin system, so I can hit like GH, and it will copy to my clipboard this link to my website that has a paste bin of whatever code I was looking at. It, it cuts out the, the folds and everything, uh, too. And then I can add like a lines equal one here if I want to see lines or I can add a folds equal one to get the folds it's just the little thing PDF move don't worry about it tabularize this helps me make tables so like if I'm in the note file and I'm making a pandoc table or whatever this is actually a Tim Pope thing I did this the other day. I don't know. I won't show that to you. Uh, these are just boring things that aren't really important. Um, I map all of these Greek characters because I type a lot of alphas and stuff, and I like to just quickly be able to like get to alpha, beta, gamma, etc. And there's probably a better way to do this, but this is what I've adapted to, and I'm fast at it now. So. And then same thing for like special math characters. I use a lot like arrows. Um, oh, and the Mac command thing. I can never find this character, so I, this has been a lifesaver. <laughs> um, this is more markdown stuff. Subscripts and superscripts. And I made another video on this last part. Basically, this adds extended text object functions for anything I put in this list. So, because this is in here, like say, I had a markdown word, bolded, and I want to get inside, I want to do a text object inside the star. You can do it like that, or vi star, you know. So it just adds all of these text objects. I made another video on YouTube about this, so watch that. That's about it, so thanks for watching.